Good morning guys, welcome back to the farm. Got another action packed day here going on. It's actually half past 12, so it's uh, afternoon, but never mind. Um, so it's Friday today. Uh, I just got a bale in the wagon there mixing up to feed some sheep. So we feed both lots of sheep on a Friday. Hopefully that should get them through till Monday. Everything got bedded up this morning, so the straw chopper is backed in there out of the way. But just whilst I've got five minutes waiting for that bale to mix up, I thought I would run you through this a little bit. Now, I know what everyone's going to think. You're going to think we've copied Tom Pemberton again because I copied him back along when he made his silage pusher, which he actually copied from Cotton I Sew. I saw it and thought, yeah, I'm going to do that as well. Um, and then to my horror, his next video was his arrow quip crush turning up. Um, and then our arrow quip crush turned up. Now, <coughs> I think Tom explained in his video that there is a massive waiting list for these, so there's none in the country, and he had it ordered for a very long time. So this has also been ordered a very long time. Um, we got it through a company local to us called Harpers. If anyone's in the Devon, Cornwall area, you'll know Harpers uh, for a feed company. So it turns out they also sell Araquip. I think they sell other makes as well, cattle crushes and things like that. And this is very slightly different to Tom's. So Tom's, I believe, is an 87 series. Uh, I'll have to check. Ours is a 74. I think that's the grade of steel that it's built from. Um, he's got a hydraulic jack on the front, whereas we've got two manual ones uh, either side for each wheel. And when we want to jack the front up, you just take the jack off there, put it on the front and wind it up. <coughs> The other little difference with ours is this. So this has got a um, circular ring that folds out um, and then you have a little collecting pen behind the crush itself for uh, when you want to take it out of the field, put it up against the hedge or something to work with cattle, you've got a collecting piece on the back. Um, and you can see it's also got eyes to put more hurdles on, uh, which is great. Other than that, it is fairly similar. So at the front here, uh, I believe it's all locked up at the moment. Um, so this bit here operates this bit. So squeezing in and out. So you can run cows and calves through at the same time without having to continuously adjust. You just do it on that bar there. Um, stop calves turning around or anything like that. The other good thing about that is they've thought about this. These black flaps. So when you squeeze this in, like so, so say you're running some calves through. These black flaps go in and block that gap there. So they've obviously thought about it so nothing can come out through the side, which is a very, very good idea. Pull it back out. It's all a bit stiff because it's all new. So you have that bolt slip back when you want to use it. And that just stops it opening when you're in transport. But this handle here operates the front gate. You can undo this little butterfly and slide that along to wherever you want it. Then got the doors the same, so they open and close. Um, push away, pull it back. And it just means you can do it from either side, because there is a handle on the other side, we'll go around in a minute. Um, so you can push it open, let the cow through, put it back. Very, very good. The actual way part is in here. So it's got the aluminium floor. Um, we've got the true test bracket up there for the way head, both the way leads. And again, this is fully adjustable. So you can pull this and both these pins come down, push it in, pull it out, depending on what you want to do. We'll leave it as it is for the time being. Another door back here. This one's currently locked, as you can see. So that goes over and back, the same as on the other side. Probably ought to lock it for the time being. Just so they don't open during transport. Again, door here that you can open on the side. In and out, if you want to. There's just every single part of it is customizable, which is brilliant. There's like no lubrication required, so it's all dry rollers. So it looks after itself. It's a bit difficult to show you how this ring bit works on the back. Um, I don't think Tom had that. I think he said he didn't have that. He had the hydraulic jack on the front instead. 
but obviously I can't fold it out when it is against the wall. It's got the detachable drawbar on the front. So it's just on a pin there. Uh, and then you slide it out. That's where you put the jack on to wind them up. And then this is the same as the other side. So you've got these doors here. Uh, if you're doing any veterinary work, which is good. This will be handy for TV testing. So when the cattle are here, you can get in at their neck. Um, so obviously we have to do TV testing every six months down here in the southwest of England. Handles for the other side of the door, which is good. I better lock that side before I forget. Another jack on this side as well. And yeah, that is the Arrowquip Crush. Can't demonstrate it now because it's not up off the floor, but this bit is very, very well thought out. The fact that you can push that shut without the animal having the ability to force it back open. Um, I really like that. Um, I was going to wait until we were using it to make the video, but it's probably not going to be till um, obviously any cat will go out. So I thought we'd give you guys a little look around it. One thing I've missed there, look. We thought, why is it turned up with a piece of water pipe? But it's, uh, it's just got water hose wrapped around a steel bar for putting in behind cattle, like that. And because that's rubber and they're nylon, it's all quiet. There's no loud banging, which I think is another important um, fact that Tom touched on in his video. You right there, sheep? So I'm down in our big sheep shed. It's called the small ruminant facility. Uh, these are what are called the platform sheep. So these guys live on the blue platform. The ones on the other side live on the green platform. We've also got some pedigree Charolais there. Uh, Rex always likes to try and breed his own rams. Um, so they've, they've all lambed now bar one, but we think the last one might be empty. Hi right there, guys. I know, you need some fresh bedding, don't you? So there's our lambs, capturing monster things though. I know. Um, and then these two piles of silage here, uh, this is green, yeah, get it right, and that one's blue, so. So the silage that gets fed to the green and blue platform animals comes from their own pasture, so those guys on this side are blue, they will only live on what we call blue fields, so. They live on blue fields, their silage comes from blue fields, the dung that they produce goes back into blue fields. Um, same with our cattle on the same system. Um, so that is a pile of blue baled silage. Um, it's full of clover and other legume type things, um, as opposed to the green, which is permanent pasture. The reason there are piles of it there is because it goes into these, uh, they're called biocontrol units. So if you've seen cattle on slats before, I know a lot of Irish farms have cattle on slats. Um, bull beef, that sort of thing. Um, very similar sort of thing, but with sheep. Um, and then they have these tubs here, which we put the feed in. Tells you how much is in them in here. Um, and it's for some form of um, feed intake trial, I believe. You see this one here, green. So green is permanent pasture. Blue, rye grass and legumes. So I feed, I do all the feeding at the moment, um, during the week and obviously on my weekends. I'm actually off this weekend. So I'm just trying to get ahead and make it a little bit easier for John, who's on. So I fed the sheep down here. Um, they should be alright now until Monday. Um, but every time we feed these sheep down here, we have to take a little sample, hardly anything, put it in a bag, goes in a freezer, gets archived, um, in case anybody wants a sample of silage that they were fed during the winter, later on for any experimental reason. So I'm going to do that in a minute, um, and then we'll be approaching lunchtime. Right. With the 155 KRM spreader, we had to play with this the other day just so we know how it works. Ready for the spread test next week. Um, I was always told take out isobus plugs when the tractors are turned off, so that is what we shall do. Electrics, right? What we'll do is we'll fire up the tractor and we'll unhook this on this little special pallet here that Craig made. And, uh, then we're going to head off to the off farm and pick up a trailer because all our trailers are being tilly tested um, either next week or the week after. So we want the uh, trailer back here for that. So. Right, that's our all off. We'll uh, make our way up to get the trailer. I don't know if you guys can remember, I've been saying a bit about our tyres and how these are worn down. Um, 
compared to the front ones which haven't so we have ordered a new set of tyres for uh, this tractor hopefully they'll be here soon and we've ordered them and John's going to fit them so we'll try and do a video on fitting them when they come but um, I won't tell you what they are until they come these are Mitchies, these are Agribibs we've not got the same tyres, one to a different brand so that'll be interesting when they come now I have come to pick up this trailer I've got to take out that post. We'll take out those posts. Come through that gap. That looks fairly tight. I didn't put it in here, so I'm not entirely sure. But we'll give it a go. This is the far more sensible option. Well, that gate ain't going to go where I want it to go either. Crumbs. That'll be alright. Yeah. Yep, that'll do. We'll do that. Now, this is fairly tight. I don't know whether this was put in here with a hand though, which has got a lot better steering on it. But if you look in the mirror, we're just about out. We've got to negotiate that gate there as well. My seat has been playing silly buggers. This little switch here does the up and down on the seat, does the air, and I can't get it where I want it because every time I pump the seat up, the valve doesn't shut and it just lets all the air back out. So I've got it up like massively high and the valve is shut, so I don't want to touch it again now, but it's a little bit hard for how I like it, but never mind. Just spotted some sunglasses. I think they belong to John. So we'll take them back, see if he wants them. Better stick the lights on the trailer a minute. Dung midden. Gonna leave that trailer there under cover just because uh, we got barley to pick up on Monday. So it's clean and dry, which if we leave it there, it'll stay clean and dry. Um, we'll leave the tractor hooked on and I think John's gonna get it, so it's all ready for him to go on Monday. Now I'm gonna go find Mr. Bowman, see if these belong to him. If they don't, we chuck them in the bin. But they say Ray Ban on them, but whether that's a genuine or not, don't know. No, carving shed update. This heifer here, I think is in the throes of carving. You see how, you can't really see, but she's gone very, very floppy um, on her back end. And she's added up a lot overnight. I think she's having a go at it. One there, though, it's got a bit of a string, but I don't think she's quite there yet. I wouldn't be surprised if that calves before we go home. We got this cow here last night, who's had a set of twins. Uh, I came into work to check them. Uh, what time did I come in? I came in about quarter to ten last night and left about quarter past ten, I was here about half an hour and it was dead quiet, nothing was happening. Got home, thought I'll have a cup of tea and uh, sit down for a half an hour before going to bed. Um, looked on the camera at about quarter to eleven and lo and behold there she is starting carving. And because she's got the green collar on and I know she's got twins, I thought, oh you sod. I'm going to have to go all the way back to work. <coughs> but. Uh, she popped one out pretty quick, and then not long after popped the second one out. So that's ideal. I caught you talking to yourself again, John. You've caught me talking to myself again. <laughs> have you uh, you come up to lean in some more cow pads, have you? Well, I've, I've come up to just, I haven't said hello to our latest calf, so I was just wondering how John was getting on with his, oh wow, look at this. Oh, with his crush thing? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I duck halfway to China, you see? Yes. <laughs> 18 inches of concrete there. <laughs> 
Oh, that'll do it, won't it? And then he's going to have one hanging yes. that way, which blocks that. Yes. And then there'll be one on there. Yes. That comes this way if you want to bring a cow in. Yes. So you've got, and there'll also be one. He's going to put a plate on there with a hanging. So there's a gate here to shut in behind. Yes. Yeah. They got you a present, though. I think they're yours. Ooh. Where were they? They were in the handling at Widden Down. Oh. Yeah, they were mine. Do you not want them? Mm. They were, they were job to see through them before <laughs> that. <laughs> Put them in the washing machine, see if they come out all right. Yeah. They say Ray Ban on, but I'm assuming they're not a genuine Ray Ban. No, they're genuine. They are? Yeah. So they must have cost 100 quid. I didn't buy that pound of quid from. Oh. I think I got them for like ten or eight. Are they like? Are they like guaranteed for life? Can you send them yes, back? See if they'll like see if they'll refit them. Does the polarizing work well on them? Yeah, really well. Yeah, right. But the trouble well. is, I think they're a bit buggered. Obviously, they're now they're a bit. Now. Buggered. What happened was, <laughs> but you can see the reflection inside of your face. Oh. And it's like oh, <laughs> that lamb was so bored with your story. Yeah. It's just <laughs> <laughs> so here we go again. <laughs> There's some silage there for those cows now, so they'll be happy. Uh, what we do is the ones in the individual pens, we just bring down these like black dustbins and fill up from this heap. Um, so that'll keep them going. The cow in the end pen there that hasn't got a calf, she was in for a Yoni's test or um, a retest because she failed a blood test when we were TB testing. Um, so I don't, I don't know if you can get the results that quick, so the vet's come and had some more bloods to retest her. We need to put her back in an isolation pen for the time being and then clean her pen out because um, you don't want to put newborn calves in a potentially yoni environment because that is their time when they're most susceptible to picking it up. So just whilst I'm passing the workshop I thought I'd mention this. So Sean our um, tractor salesman came in with some leaflets about the new 6R tractor launch at um, Mason Kings. So it is at their Chudley depot I believe. Yeah at their Chudley depot 7th of March 2 till 8 and 8th of March 10 till 2 so we'll be there one of the days don't know which one yet but um, it'd be cool to see some people there and see the new 6R tractors right time to go pushing now, honey I've been driving around in my car looking for some kind of open bar it's gonna be alright gonna be alright got no money but I'll work it out with my charm having a good time and doing no harm it's gonna be alright gonna be alright Honey, I've been driving around in my car Looking for some kind of open bar It's gonna be alright, gonna be alright Got no money, but I'll work it out with my charm Having a good time and doing no harm It's gonna be alright, gonna be alright Right, we're all done with this one Stay there Tonight I forgot to ask John if you want yes. if you wanted to make any more parental shout outs. Parental shout outs. <laughs> um give over to mother, she's got COVID. Has she? Yeah. That's oh, so with dad. Uh, well they've been up to that. Could be a connection. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, question yeah. should be asked. Yes. Yes. Because yeah. uh, no gates there, is it? So I'll go and stand on the lower side. Yes, yeah, you could, Bill, thank you. Right there. I'm gonna get over here so I'm out of the way. Do you miss Cow? Did she fail it spectacularly or she, we don't know? I don't think so. No, they, they were... Um, it might have been like an inconclusive test. Yeah. Jump over the Straight up over the Sports Passat. Oh, we should have opened from the other gate. Other way. Come on, go. There's a good girl. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Uh, Never seen you move so fast, Phil. Good job this weekend. You might have to. That's a two handed job. Sport is looking very pert in the rear end there. Yeah, yeah. Getting drenches. <laughs> Getting three inches. <laughs> right. For anyone not from Devon, that means it's gained three inches. <laughs> <laughs> even for some people from Devon. Even, yeah, even some. <laughs> <laughs>
That was your cue, Heifer, to go and lick the car. Well, I saw on um, Twitter the other day, Yes. this guy put jam. What, on the calf? No, on the cow's teats. Oh, oh to get the calf to, to suck. To get the calf to suck. I don't know whether the calf was sucking, so... So this calf was born earlier today. The mother hasn't actually licked it off. Well, it looks a bit wet still, so John's just put some salt on it. Because cows love salt. But she is a heifer, so she's not had a calf before. So she, she sort of stood there wondering what on earth's going on. It's a bit of mess with her bed, isn't it? She has. Well, she has got a mat in this pen. Yeah. She's got comfort. Hmm. Well, you never understand. Oh, salty. Perhaps she's just shy. Tastes like chips. Tastes like chips. Come on in, short stuff. You are tiny. Oh. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Heifer? I believe so. Heifer, where are you off to, Heifer? Come on, in there. Well done, mate. Yeah, she's licked the salt. Oh, okay. Right, jobs are good, isn't yeah. Right, it's Friday night. Everything's fed. All the calves are tagged. So I'm going home. Put my lunchbox in there. Make sure the dog's happy. Are you happy, Mr. Gus? Yes, I'm happy. Going home for my tea. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, you can follow me on my other socials, they'll be on the bottom screen now, links in the description, and yeah, we'll see you on another video very soon. Cheerio.